Yeah. Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you on Wednesday, March the 22nd. The year's 2023. Let's talk trading. Outsmarting the retail trader with Walmart. As always, these videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and different from Walmart's. Walmart, we had a uh, trader over on Facebook ask us about outsmarting the retail trader. Yeah, it was actually a very interesting thread. In fact, anybody wants to go back and actually read the thread, there were a number of users who were actually involved in the thread. But, you know, there's this old thing that's out there, you know, how can we go making money in Forex? You know, I've tried this, I've tried that, you know, the old, the old, I've gone and done all the breakouts. It seems that, you know, yeah, I win some, but I lose some. And I just, at the end of the day, I tend to lose money. At the end of the year, I lose money. End of three or four years, I'm losing money. I'm not getting anywhere with it. And we start looking for other things to go and try to, you know, beat it. And then there's, you know, there's a, this concept out there. Well, all the retailers are out there. They're trying to do the breakout. And we know that the banks are really trading against them and maybe we can go and take advantage of what the banks do. in other words get on the same side as the banks wouldn't that be great and yeah it would be and but there's a couple of things that are fighting against us with all that but the first thing is that you know in forex we don't get what you get in the stock market meaning level two you know level two um numbers with what that what the level two stuff does it basically shows you where all the orders are being placed so we see ahead of time where all the you know if we go out there and we put pending orders out there we put stop losses out there we put our tps out there we can see where all those orders are sitting and therefore have a good indication where price is going to migrate to okay and what i mean by that is that if we got lots of tps and lots of um, uh, stop losses and lots of pending orders sitting above where price is right now, well, price is going to go and drift up to that spot. Well, guess what? We don't have that in Forex. Um, so this idea of trying to go and fight battle like the banks do, you know, um, uh, you know, in Forex, I think that it's something that we probably can't do, um, not easily anyway. Uh, and the reason why is because we just don't have all the data that's available. Now, if you're going to go play the stock market, you probably have a better shot at it. Now, of course, what you could do, and with this tr uh, trader, I believe I understood what his statement was, and if I were understanding it correctly, what you could do is you can look for those places where a breakout's going to happen, like a double O or a psychological number, you know, a, you know, meaning a 25, 50, 75, you know, or where it's going to break, you know, uh, support and resistance areas, um, you know, and go and say, okay, well, well, the banks know that people, the retailers, that's where they like to go and take their trades. And it's true, most retailers, that's where they like to go and take their trades. And then, so what the banks will do is they'll come in, allow price to get there, trigger your trades off, and then they'll push the market in the other direction and clear your stops. Well, uh, you know, the idea being here, well, what we could do is, when it hits that target area, what we can do is we can go trade in the other direction, just like the banks, and go and get grab some of that stop money too. Here's the problem with it. Most retailers um, put in stop losses of only two or three, maybe, absolutely maybe four pips below where that breakout is occurring because they can't afford to go in the letter of, or allow it to go, price to go that far underwater more than that because their account sizes aren't big enough. And because of that, you know, what will happen is they, you know, uh, there's not very much room in it to go make some pips. Now, the banks don't care, okay? And the reason why is because if they go and they're able to sit out there and clear all those stops out, you know, if they go and clear all those stops and they put in a trade for, you know, I don't know, 50 lots, you know, 100 lots, whatever it may be, maybe even a thousand lots, you know, and they clear every one of those stops out. And let's say they only go and look to get one pit. Well, that's, you know, think about this, you know, a thousand lots times one pit. That, that, that's an awful lot of money that they can make in one fell swoop. And if they do that several times a day, multiple times a day, every, every day of the week, 
they can go wind up and, you know, rack the bank bid. Us, on the other hand, the problem that we have with doing that is simply this, you know, we don't have account sizes that are big enough. Now, if we're only looking to get a pip and we're able to do this two or three times a day and we're able to go in, you know, our account size dictates we're allowed to do it, where we can go and just make maybe two pips a day or three pips a day, and that satisfies what we're looking to, well, maybe a bank could be, you know, something that we could, you know, make money on. The second problem is this. If it turns out that those stops don't get cleared out for whatever reason, you know, whatever it may be, it just, nice, just continues going and breakouts happen. You know, breakouts happen and they continue and the price we never get down need to clear those stops out. That's why sometimes you win. If you take if you're a breakout trader, well what the bank can do and they have the ability to do it because they've got the bank roll behind them, is that when it's further up, they can average in, you know, at a much higher rate and wait for a dip. And when they get the dip, they're able to clear those clear those losses off the books. Yeah, they still take a loss, but they take enough of a win to go and basically, you know, clear it off their books. You know, most retailers or people like you and I, you know, don't have enough, you know, cash sitting in our in our account to allow us to go and, you know, put on a huge bet up top to go and take that chance to go be able to go and do that. So that, that's the second problem with doing it. Now, again, like I said in the, in the beginning of this, um, there's a possibility that in the stock market you could go and you know, you have better odds because at least you can see the same data that the banks are seeing and you can see what prices migrating to. What do you think, Tiaro? Well, the first thing is um, they said something about a false breakout. And I guess it's the difference between being a uh, engineer versus a mathematician. <laughs> um, If price goes one point above whatever previous high, that's a breakout. It moved, it moved, the, you know, it crossed the line. Now, you might call it a false breakout, but the reality is it is a breakout. Just some breakouts are bigger than others, you know. And <clears throat> guess what you what um people are saying is if they want to go, you know. Um, and take the, you know, as price is crossing the line, take that trade, it's like, well, yeah, maybe it moves a little, maybe it moves a lot. We don't know. But, you know, to call it a false breakout, no, it's just that it didn't move as, you know, the amount you wanted it to so you could take some profit off the table. So first you got to get that out of your head. It's like, oh, it broke out, but not that much. Um, it's like this uh, current M30 bar. It hit 75. It broke it by 0.3. You know, for me, that's just that would just cover the commission on one account and wouldn't even really cover the spread on on the one that I used to make these videos. Um, point being, you know, you just have to take that into consideration. You know, and all the rest of it is, you just have to. Uh, Put your trade on, you know, and make sure you follow your rules. Put your, you know, have your stop loss so you're managing, you know, the downside and see if the market gives you an opportunity to take pips. Um, and then the question is, is that, you know, is one pip enough? Is two pips enough or three pips enough? You know, um, do you have to answer that question? And then, once you're out of the trade, it's over. You got to start again. And if, you know, if that door to the kitchen swings open and the waiter brings out another tray of shrimp, well, and you're already out of the line, well, guess what? You don't get to eat any more shrimp unless you go buy another ticket to get back in the line. And that's called entering the trade again. So I kind of have to laugh at that because... It, it's it, it's a mind game more than anything else um, because we'll get upset when we take losses we'll get upset when we take wins <laughs> it's like you just have to just stop getting upset and just you know trade pretty much what you see and it's just like Walmart and I've been trading this morning and 
it's like I've been wanting to be short the whole time, right, Wall Mall? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and to be short. And you know, I'm kicking myself because I was short at eighty eight and punched out early and look where price is now. <laughs> but it's one of those things, well, I know just looking at this chart what price likes to do. It goes from yellow line to yellow line and kind of takes breaks and pauses at the gray lines in between every five pips. But, you know, if it doesn't hit 2300, it's going to hit 2275. You know, if it hits 2275, once there, it's either going to 2300 or 2250. I mean, <laughs> You can pretty much bet on it, and that's what we do when we trade. We're, we're betting on, on it, and as price is dropping, and I'm kicking myself for not being in a trade right now short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and that's the, that's the thing, you know. You, all you can do is make your best guess as to what price is going to go and do, and take advantage of it when you can. And, and uh, that's why money management, to me, is number one. Because if you, you know, if you manage the money, you know, I, I almost, I, I know it's probably not true, but I really feel like if you just randomly went into a trade and managed the money well, you could still wind up actually having a positive, you know, a positive account. Now, maybe you're only positive by two cents, <laughs> but, but I really think that you could really do that. Well, the question though is, well, mom, if you, if, you know, if you sat down at a, say, a, a trading simulator or whatever, and just out of the blue, boom, a trade pops up, um, you know, and you're in a trade. Now, the question is, are you allowed to, you know, average in, or must you only either take profit or exit that single trade? Because that makes all the well, difference I, in the world. Oh, yeah. You know, it's sort of like, you know, it's sort of like you can have a strategy, but you have to go down. You know, the question is what tactics are you going to use in order to fulfill that that, that strategy? Right. You know, and it, it all it all comes down to that. You know, like do we have the ability to average in? Do we have the ability to hedge? Like we talked about yesterday. You know, um, what tools? You know, what tools do you have? And then you got to remember that just because the tool is there doesn't mean that you necessarily should use it yet. Because let's face it, you know type of thing where you could be a brand new carpenter on a job and you may not necessarily be the person who should be using that particular tool because you're not you know sitting there because you, you don't have the ability to go and actually use that properly you know you, you, let's say you're building you know some fancy fr furniture for the Waldorf Astoria in New York City you know uh, should you be the one that's carving out the delicate you know finishing touch-up work or should you just be watching and learning and practicing on the side, you know? <laughs> it's sort of like you, you may have the tool, you may have the chisel in your hand, but perhaps you shouldn't be the one working on the million-dollar piece. Right. So that's why I've been saying, you know, as traders, you really have to learn to uh, manage the money, you know, the, the risk and then two it's like you, you got to get out of your own way manage your brain the brain management is you know that's something i still struggle with <laughs> well i all can attest to it <laughs> you, hear some... you, you see me in pain <laughs> yeah so i hope that answers that one trader's question and and thanks for posing it um can you outsmart the retail traders Thing is, you don't really have to outsmart the retail traders. You just have to make pips in your own account because it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. This is the rumpled one over and out.